Dear students, in this module we continue to explore further the properties of amino acids. It, it was a very important topic because it gives rise to the properties for 3D proteins as well. So, the amino acids, as you know now, have characteristics such as polarity, hydrophobicity, and the charge states. Polarity simply would mean the distribution of the positive and negative charges within an amino acid, but the overall charge of the amino acid stays as zero. Hydrophobicity was that the amino acid does not like to interact with water and therefore was located at the core of the protein. Similarly, the charge state of the uh, amino acid tells you what, are, what is the total charge present on the R group. So in this module, we're going to see how the charge group of an amino acid can affect the properties of that amino acid. You know that all of these properties are born from the R group. So the R group takes a property and this property becomes the overall property of the amino acid. So there are two types of charged amino acids, the positively charged and the negatively charged. So obviously a positively charged amino acid would mean that the R group side chain of the amino acid is positively charged. You can see here in this figure, the side groups are shown in pink and all of them are positively charged. You will also note that the amine group and the carboxyl group are also charged for each one of these shown amino acids. So one wonders about their contribution to the overall charge as well. But as you know, it is one negative for carboxyl group and one positive for the amino group. So therefore, they, these charges, they cancel out and the net charge of the amino acid is determined by the side chains. So it is very important to remember that the charge of an amino acid can be computed by just looking at the R group side chains. Okay, so the negatively charged amino acids are shown here and the side groups are also mentioned. So you can see that each of the side group has a negative charge here and here. So the overall charge of the amino acid can be taken to be negative since this positive and this negative charge will cancel out. So in this way, aspartate and glutamate can act as a negatively charged uh, amino acids and upon polymerization, all of these charges are neutralized. It is very important to also consider the behavior of these charges at different pH levels. So pH, if pH were to be changed the positive and the negative charges on the amino acid will get affected. So at pH 7, that is the normal pH, two amino acids are negatively charged while another three are positively charged. 